Define capacitance. Oh, so you already know. Oh, this question probably about capacitance. If you ever forget, just remember Q equals to CV. So C equals to Q, how much charge stored, and the potential difference across the capacitor. Now, you have to be careful. Is this capacitance I'm talking about parallel plate or just capacitance in general? It looks like it's capacitance in general. So you don't have to talk about the whole parallel plate thing. You can just say it is the ratio of charge stored. Stored where? Mm, they didn't say it's a parallel plate or sphere. So just say it's charge stored to potential difference across it. There we go. Nice one, Mark. This is a B1. Okay, ratio. Uh. So charge store over potential difference. Okay, next. Oh, we have isolated metal sphere has radius R when R when it's charged to a potential charge on the sphere is Q. So you're gonna have something like this. Radius R. And it has all these nice little charges stored. Positive. Uh. I just assume positive. Uh, yeah, it can be other things. Okay, so this one is charge Q. It's charged up to a potential of V with respect to ground. The charge may be considered to act as a point charge at the center of the sphere. Eh? This, like, this, like, this is like electric field kind of question. Correct, huh? Set an expression for the potential of the sphere. So <laughs> it's kind of a bonus. You can remember your, oh, electric field. Wait a second. KQ over R. But maybe not use K. La. You write the full one. 1 over 4 pi E naught or epsilon naught. Uh, over times R. Okay, where's my Q? Q, ah. So this is the expression for potential of the sphere, charge at a very high potential already. Okay, this expression is just a B1 mark. So this isolated sphere, now it's just by itself, keeping its charge with it, has a capacitance. Use your answers in A, this one, they give you a hint, use this, and B1, this equation, to show, prove something. Show that the capacitance is proportional to radius. So this is what you're showing, uh, capacitance is proportional to radius. Don't forget, that's the end goal. And let's see, one mark only. So you can know that, oh, Q equals to CV. Because we want to include C. Uh, but we know V is this equation for uh, a sphere, a charged sphere. So we can plug that in. Yeah, so let me rearrange first. C equals to Q over V. Then I put the whole V inside. So this will be Q, or this should be small Q, over 4 pi epsilon naught R. And then I get Q's cancel off. So all I have is 4 pi epsilon naught R. The end. Eh, wait, 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 wait. Not the end yet. You must show that it is proportional to, capacitance proportional to radius. So... State the obvious. Is 4 pi epsilon not a constant? Yes? Then say it out. 4 pi epsilon not is constant. Proportionality, you know? So that leaves with C proportional to R. Because oh, if epsilon not is not a constant, you cannot simply say C is proportional to R because we don't know. So here is just one mark. Uh, if you kind of did this and you conclude, that 4 pi epsilon naught is constant, then you get a method one mark. Okay, so I'm asking you to see like an A0. This is just to tell you, you should get here with all the conclusion above. Otherwise, you might lose your M1 mark. Okay, now we have to find the radius of the sphere. The sphere has a capacitance C charged to a potential V. How to find uh? QCV? Uh? But we don't know the Q yet, kind of. Yeah, we don't have information of how much Q is stored, so we can't use QCV. But we do know that C equals to 4 pi E not R. And we can use that straight away to find R. No need to care about Q. Okay, very nice. So you know this is 6.8 pico. Wow, what is pico? Ah? Hey, this one. Ah. Please don't forget your AS prefixes times 10 to the negative 12. So this will be times 10, negative 12, equals to 4, you know what, let me just divide. 4 pi, oh, what is epsilon? Epsilon is a constant, you can find it in the calculator or the first page of every question paper. This is 8.85, or oh, you can memorize it, I guess, times 10, the negative 12, and this is your radius. So radius 
about 0 0.0611 meters. I will write my answer in standard form. So 6.1 times 10, negative 2. Correct, right? Yeah, correct. Or 6.11 also can. Lah. So three marks all, you can guess. One is for final answer. One is for equation. Do you know which one to use? You prove it here just now. Nah, this one. Then you just use it here. Then your substitution. Did you sub in correctly all the values? Then you get that one. Okay, three marks for this. Next, what are we doing next? Wow, got so many more parts. Now you find the Q. Ah, so your Q, now you can do that. Q equals CV. Just now we cannot because we don't know Q. Now we are finding the Q. So we can, we know the capacitance from before, right? Down here. 6.8 picofarads. So let's do the 6.8 over here. So 6.8 pico, negative 12. You forgot I did go and refresh a bit. Volts is 220 on the sphere. So that will give us 1.496 times 10, negative 9. Final answer, ah, how many SF to write? Ah? 2 SF, 2 SF, okay lah, 2 or 3 SF also can now. So I'll just put 1.5. You know, 1.50, why not? <laughs> it's technically the same thing, but okay. One mark here. So this is just A1. Next, a second uncharged metal sphere is brought up to the sphere so that they touch. Wow, the combined capacitor of the two sphere is... 18. Ah, huh? can combine like that one, meh? Can, why not? So if you are finding it very strange, like what is happening, here's what's happening. In the beginning, you have only one sphere. And then it has many, 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 many charges stored on it there already. So this one is at, originally at, how many volts? How many volts are? 220, I think. Yeah, so there's 220 volts with a certain Q stored on this fella. Now you bring another metal sphere closer. What happened? Ah? So this becomes maybe like this. They touch. So what's going to happen is all the charges in the first sphere will just redistribute themselves throughout this both sphere because they are metal. Ma, so the charges can move around. So they will like kind of mm, they will do something like this. Ah. Same total Q but now you're at a different potential already. How do you find that? Okay, so I write here, same amount of charge. You didn't lose any charge, you didn't gain any charge. So what you can do is, oh, Q equals to CV, because we know the new combined capacitance. Charge Q is the same. So we know that previously there's this amount of charge stored on one sphere, now become 2 liao. Okay, so this is 1.5 times 10, negative 9. New capacitance, 18 pico farad. And then you can use that to count the new potential, which is about 83.33 volts. So I write here, I are 83 volts. Ah. Means or, actually the potential difference drop. Oh. At first it's 220. Now the potential difference at the surface of this whole sphere is going to be 83 volts. No more question mark. We know already. And you're the same Q. Now the next one is where you have to kind of brain a bit. The change in total energy stored on the sphere, total uh, when they touch. So in the beginning, you're going to have some energy. I don't know what, E, uh, E1. Then after you touch together, you have a new E. What equation are you going to use to calculate the change in energy? Once again, energy can be calculated with half QV or half CV squared. Few methods. How to, which one to use? Ah? Q. Ah. Do we know Q? Do we know C? Actually, to be honest, you can use both equations. One is going to be a bit longer than the other. I'll show you the shorter one first. So I'm going to use half QV. Delta E will be, uh, Q is the same, right? So half Q V final minus V initial or something like that. Okay, lah. so half charge stored is 1.5 times 10 to the 9. So let's write that down. And what is the change in potential? At first, it's 220. Now drop down to 83. Now. So 220. It's a decrease, lah, but we don't care about the positive negative sign. So just want to find the change. Although it should be like 83 minus 220. Never mind. Lah. So if you do this in minus, you will get about 1.03 times 10, 
negative 7. Oh, it's a decrease actually because it's supposed to be 83 minus 220. So here are 3 marks. Final answer times 10, negative 7. That's A1. Equation C1, substitution C1, something like that. Yeah, okay. So the long method, slightly longer, is if you use half CV square. Where is it? Ah, here. Because you have a different C and a different V for both. Leh. So I also write out the second method. Lah. Or, or, you want to do half CV square minus half CV square. Okay, let's do the final one. So the final capacitance will be 18 picofarads. So 18 times 10 negative pico oh, 12 what's the final v 83 oh so you do 83 okay, la, okay la, we do properly final minus initial minus the initial initial capacitance given to us was 6.8 only very small so 6.8 times 10 negative 12 initial vote 220 what you get here you get a negative 1.03 times 10 negative 7 which is about the same thing a bit longer like because you have changing c and changing v extra work. If I say miss, why don't the first one got negative? That's because I swap. I I go and say I have initial minus final just because I don't like negative sign. But if you want to be straight, you say final minus initial. Lo. Okay, lo, okay, lo. we write final minus initial. Then you get a negative 1.03. <laughs> right? So that's the end of this question, I would say. Yeah, all right. That is this question about capacitance, how you can calculate capacitance of a sphere specifically.